Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem. And hopefully I can find the appropriate heavy metal track for this guy. We're painting up Doom Guy. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you do enjoy the content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And on today's video, we've got Doom Guy. I'm gonna bring him closer up to the camera. This is a 3D print from a friend of mine. I know it's a, just a tiny little bit off with the blade on the wrist, but that doesn't matter because this is mainly for him to test, test his 3D printing capabilities. And it's going to be for me to be able to paint up something completely different for my channel. This guy, I do like Doom Guy, is going to be a nice riot of colour. So it's going to be very different to what I'm normally used to doing. And it's going to be quite entertaining to do, if I'm completely honest. We're going to have to have some greys, we're going to have to have some various different varieties of greens and it's probably going to be a lot of wet blending and a lot of wet palette work which is what I'm looking forward to. I don't think I'm going to be using much of an airbrush on this guy because I don't think he needs it. Uh, I might do a Xenophil highlight though just to make sure that we've got some base to go on. So let's get that sorted. So one of the first steps I'm going to do is to do a Xenophil highlight and I'm going to be doing that with some ab administratum grey from Games Workshop. Just to finish off the Xenophon, I'm going to do a little bit of spot highlighting with some white. Just be careful with white because it is a pain in the butt. I'm going to try and create some striation stripes maybe across the sword. God damn you. So we've got a Xenophil highlight down. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna kind of, we've, we've done it quite bright. I'm gonna bring it back down by going over with contrast Griff Charger Gray. Now this should give us it should basically do it'll bring it'll dull down a lot of what we've done with the pre-shade we're going to put it all over got a lot of the armor panels or sort of panels in between the different colors like the, the red the greens and the browns they're all gray gray kind of panels so what we're doing is basically making sure that we've got those gray panels done by just giving the whole model a coat of Griff Charger and then we can it's still Griff Charger grey is really good because it's still it's still quite bright on the underneath so even though we've got area, areas and elements that's going to be green we're still going to be able to benefit from the pre-shade that we've done but it's going to be more dulled and then we're going to be able to layer it up properly and I need to shave that up now as grey is down and dry, we're going to uh, get some wild wood. Uh, Games Workshop contrast. I'm going to be doing a lot of this in contrast because of course it's going to be nice and easy to get a lot of the basing done. It's really good sort of way if you wanted to do like a kind of like a glazing technique. Now, the actual model itself, I'm being very precise and very careful. It was dark. We are going to come in and highlight when we need to. Try and get yourself a reference. So at the moment I've got an iPad next to me with a picture of what this guy actually looks like. And I'm just going to copy in what I can. We're letting the 
We're seriously letting a lot of the shade that we've already done do a lot of the work. Now, any reference, I'm gonna to have to come away because I really, really need to get this closer to my face and I can't really be having a camera in there while I'm doing this. Be really careful. This is what the skill is on this one, is being very careful not to sort of touch those lines that you want into the main gray. So now we've got our brown down. We're gonna actually get some orc flesh. You know, but he's got a nice green on his armor. And again, just using whatever reference you can, start painting up some of these panels. Again, if you can try and keep a, a nice edge line of that grey that you've already got. Work with the contrast paint being quite nice and quite thin. Try not, try not to go back over and over again if you can help it, because it does look So he's coming along now. Uh, the back is mainly grey. I'm probably going to put a bit more brown in there in a moment. Everything is kind of drying. The Zenithal highlight is kicking in some nice little touches and highlights, especially on the green. And what we're going to do while I've got my paints out and I've got it on a wet palette, I'm going to paint in his arms. So we're going to be using some rat skin flesh as the starting base. Now this, I'm actually going to use a really thin brush here. This is going to be a it's by that's really a cheap make it's uh Tagliari. it's a 10 slash zero it's very very thin on the nib i know it's got a little bit of a spray but that should be corrected with a little bit of the old spit there yes it's probably what's degraded some of my brain cells already yeah we are gonna Painting that arm with a nice and thin paint, uh, paint on a wet palette. Uh, Xenophil highlights should kick in and give us some good flesh tones. So once that's on and in, we need to get on to the next stage. Now we're going to mix Acadian uh, flesh tone with uh, some of the rat skin flesh. Um, so Cadian Flesh Tone on a wet palette mixed in with the rat skin. I've already done some Recon Flesh Shade, so they'll shade in the actual recesses of the arms. So what we're going to do, hopefully we've focused there yet, just going to start to blend and layer this up. If you want to use a small brush you can, I'm mainly using a bigger brush because I know when I can't get into the recess. It will allow me just to paint what's kind of on top. And then what we're going to do is just do a couple of layers of that and then just go for pure, we've got some pure Cadian flesh tone, we'll just go for some pure Cadian flesh tone and make sure to see it. And then just highlight just a little bit more. Now we're just going to use a little bit of the old Kisler flesh. It's watered down on my wet palette, nice and thin. I'm just going to try and pick out any particular detail on this. It is a tested 3D print, so it might not have some of the greatest. We're just picking out just little bits. A little bit there, there. And that should be it for the flash. Now what we're gonna do is to start to kind of highlight some of these armor pieces. So we've got his arms in. And we're going to use a mixture of Rhinox, Morn, Fang and Scrag. So Rhinox, Hide, Morn, Fang and Scrag. So what we're going to kind of do is to mix 
these particular paints so so the outer armor this bit here this bit here and this bit here and of course of course you've got those at the back ignore the pouches for now I suppose you could actually do the pouches if you want uh, but this bit uh, this bit, the armour piece uh, on the side, and then the arm piece on the side there. Maybe some of the internal ones. They're going to be the Morn Fang. So we're going to mix the Morn Fang with the Rhinox. And that's going to kind of start going over the top of our Wildwood. Now we're not going to destroy the Wildwood completely. We just need it again, nice and thin. And we're having it as a highlight, so and then for the inner workings, of course, my hands are a little bit. But yeah, working. We're going to use the so on the boots and on the stomach. We're going to use a scrag brown. Now we're going to build this up. So again, just using nice thin down pieces. Make sure it's about 50/50, and then put a couple of layers of that in there, and then start layering in the moan frank. Try and leave the you know, pure metal fine. Try and leave the recesses if you can. Get nice and thin layers. In fact. Do that bit, I'm just looking at the reference, that bit will be the scrag, but the rest of the boot, but that was the mourn front, so it's mainly itself like the, the leathery style armour. Front of the, of the tip of the boot there. All the bits at the back. Done. We're still allowing the uh, then I'll highlight to sort of do a lot of the work for us as well. So the darker bits are going to appear darker. Higher bits are going to appear lighter. Bit of a touch of that as well, the uh, ammo packs and stuff. He's got on around his belt. Hopefully you can see all that. And I'm not just focusing on my hand. So now we're going to be using some Warpstone Law, wet palleted as usual, and we're going to start layering up on the green. Just kind of follow some lines. Thin this down quite a lot. I'm just going to. Build up that nice highlight. In fact, even maybe a base even awesome looking shade. And we're just going to we're gonna build up that thing. Same as before, just layer it on nice and steady. Keep it thin.
So it's coming along, if you can see right. It's starting to look pretty tasty. Right, now, Calador Sky is next. I'm going to uh, spin this down a little bit. This is going to be for the actual visor. Not a lot, again, wet palette here. Always wet palette. I'm going to get a really thin brush get for this colour though and we are going to very gently lightly just paint this visor in completely we're going to leave the excesses and everything else trying to downward stroke So for my next trick, we're going to do the metallics. Now we've got some Retributor armor. That is going to be for the pommel bit of the actual sword. We've got some lead belcher, which is the silver pieces. It's going to go onto this stabby weapon and his hands. And then we've got uh, some Screaming Bell. And what I'm going to do with the Screaming Bell is all the little dots and ridges that are sticking up. I'm just going to put that over them. Not on the shoulder pads, mainly just on the arms. And on those elbow pads, maybe some other leg pads as well. I've got a little fire dragon bright in my uh, airbrush, and I'm just going to put a little detail on the actual sword. I'm just using a bit of a makeshift shield here uh, with some cloth. So we got that sort of little bit of airbrush on there. I've put a um, Cassandra yellow wash on there and then I just dry brushed it with a little bit of the orange as well. Just to try and make it stand out a little bit. I think the uh, 3D printing process is not left it really a lot recessed in there. So it's the, the ink has not uh, gone into the recess like I hoped it would do. It doesn't matter. Um, it still looks all right. I'm going to get this guy based, varnished, and we can probably consider him done. So pretty much done. Uh, so let's get this varnished and let's put it on a base. And there he is in all of his glory on the base. Um, nice little model, to be honest. If you can get someone to 3D print it for you, highly recommend it. Um, it was a very, very nice... Um, I didn't have to put it together, but it was a very, very nice uh, nice little piece to uh, just to keep my eye in, I suppose, a little bit and just to do something very different from 40k for once. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please, uh, if you did enjoy the content, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing. All the usual good stuff that you do to all of your favourite YouTubers. And uh, hopefully, got some more painting videos in the pipeline and uh, hopefully some more battle reports as well, because they should be coming soon. Uh, apologies for the camera wobble. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.